would you be turning your Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 12? <clears throat> read a few verses here and study a little bit. We do again uh, ask your prayers. And, uh, I might say this morning that uh, Brother Jarrett, maybe uh, I've asked him to conduct a lesson for next Sunday, so we'll be looking forward to that and praying about that. Uh, I need to. I need a little help, I think, so you all remember one another, each one of us we, as you pray. But in verse 1 of chapter 12, we see Jesus here, and he was he had been speaking to the multitudes, and, uh, and it says, In the meantime, when there was were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod or trampled upon one another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware of the leavening of the Pharisees and hypocrisies. And this morning, this is something that we need to take to heart. We need to understand what he's saying to his, his disciples and to the leavening or the, the sin, the uh, hypocrisy that's going on in our country today and uh, the, even the hypocrisy that is coming out of a lot of the churches that are supposed to be standing for the truth and we see here that he was talking about the Pharisees and they were they were great pretenders mm -hmm. and they uh, did not uh, believe the way that uh, Jesus taught, and they were very uh, uh, different from him. And I want you to uh, look at something this morning, if you would, in, in Luke uh, uh, 12, uh, let's, I'm sorry, uh, Mark 14, Mark uh, 8, 14. I have something here I'd like for you to listen to, Mark 8 and 14. And he's talking about the leavening here as we were reading. And then he continues here. This, this was a situation that happened with the disciples. And uh, they did not understand. And I don't know if this was prior to or, or after or whatever this situation happened here that Jesus was, was warning them. But I know time and time again he warned uh, his uh, disciples and the people about these things that were going on with the Pharisees about the leavening and about uh, the uh, uh, the uh, hypocrisy that was in their lives. But he says now in verse 14 of Mark 8, he says, Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leavening of the Pharisees and of the, and of the leavening of Herod. So he's warning them. And of course, we see here this morning, if, if they had already seen uh, what I read this morning, they may have thought, well, when we tell Jesus this, that he will bless this loaf and it will be plenty. But listen, what he didn't do was uh, he didn't do that. He wanted them to be aware, and like he was over here uh, with the Lebanon, with the with the sin that is going on in the world, and the sin that is that is besetting uh, so many of the people then and now too. And so he said here, he said, you said, he said, take heed, beware of the Lebanon of the Pharisees and of the of Lebanon of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying. Is it because we have no bread? And uh, you see, the, the disciples, uh, it, it, sometimes you under, try to understand them, and sometimes they were uh, poor that they could understand it, and then Jesus had to explain it sometimes, and sometimes after he explained it, they didn't, ex they didn't understand it well. And it's the same way with us today. We can read God's Word, we can pray, and God can speak to our souls, and He can... Uh, show us stuff in the in our in the scriptures, and still it doesn't ring a bell. Right. But listen, let me tell you something. This morning, when when we do read something, when we do read something, and and the and the Holy Spirit shows it to us, 
it makes us rejoice inside and this morning it would be it's a blessing and it would be a blessing this morning to each one of us if we could understand this scripture that we're reading this morning so he says in verse 16 and they reasoned among themselves saying it is because we have no bread mm -hmm. and jesus when he knew it he said unto them why reason ye because you have no bread perceive ye not yet neither understand have ye have ye your heart yet hardened having eyes see ye not having ears hear ye not and do ye not remember and of course i'm saying i believe this morning when he says do you not remember he has he has spoken these words to the disciples before and he has told them about this the sins and the leavening and the, and the pharisees and what they believe because we're going to see just a little bit later on about the pharisees and, and some of the things that they believed and and they 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 didn't it wasn't biblical but it was something that they got together and used but here he says when when I break, and, and so evidently he had, they had seen this because, listen, when I break the five loaves among the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye? And they said unto him, twelve. Right. And when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said seven. And so he is reminding them of these incidents, and I, I didn't uh, study it far enough to read this, but anyway, Jesus is telling them, don't you remember these things? Don't you understand these things and what, what had went on? So back in our lesson this morning in verse 12 of uh, chapter 12 of uh, verse 3, Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be light in the light, and that uh, heard in the light, and that, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetop. And I Amen. say unto you, my friend, be not afraid of them that kill the body and have, and after that, have no more that they can do. And so here we want to see something, but he says, I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell Yes, I say unto you, fear him. And so we see here that they, that they're, they're, that Jesus is pointing to the Father, and He's saying, you, "This is the one that you to fear." Because listen, those that fear that uh, the man that kills the body, that's as far as he can go. Right. And listen, when you die, you're dead. As far as what uh, what will going to happen to your soul? And this morning, uh, he said, "You fear the Lord Jesus Christ. You serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and you uh, pay attention to Him." And he says, and he and he wants to he wants to show them his love towards them. He says, "Are not five sparrows sold for two fatherings?" Or, and this this fathering is a I looked it up and it was a small amount of money. But anyway, it's it, very little. But he's saying, "Are not five sparrows sold for two fatherings?" And not one of them is begot as for is forgotten before God. Amen. And so we this morning as as, as God's people, uh, we we need to really uh, uh, be encouraged this morning when we we know that we have salvation. We know that the Lord has called us. We know the Lord has saved us, and we should realize and we should take courage and and. Uh, do our thing because he's called us and he's he's not going to forgive us because he he said here uh these five sparrows they don't mean that much but he's because he says but even the hair of your head are all numbered yeah. you know and so he says fear but if if that if that servant say let me let me look back just a minute split page no, I said, fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Amen. So here is, here, is, here is some good information for us this morning that we should not 
hesitate when we have the opportunity to be an encouragement to someone to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. We should not hold back on what we think they'll feel. Because listen, who we're serving is not them, but who we're serving is the Lord Jesus Christ and God. And we need to tell them about him because listen, uh, it might make a difference and it might make a difference in their life and it might make a difference in through them in one of your loved one's lives and it listen it might be it might be passed on and so this morning he says uh, uh and also i in verse 8 also i say unto you whosoever shall confess me before me and him shall the son of man also confess before his angels and i believe he's talking about uh, in heaven, and, and he's and, and Jesus will confess, hey, he is my uh, brother, and I died for him, and and this is in before God, and he understands all this. So he said, and whoso in verse ten, and whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. And so this morning, think about this this situation. You think about the situation what he's saying here this morning. He says, and whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Right. And this morning, when we blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, that is the one that God sent to us and is our comforter. And when we reject that Holy Spirit, when we reject Him, listen, there is no way whatsoever that we can be in fellowship. There's no way that we uh, can uh, have anything to do with God because we reject the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the one who comes in and speaks to our hearts and tells us our condition and burdens our hearts and continually stays with us and burdens our heart. And you that are saved know this morning what this burden feels like. Right. And this burden this morning, <clears throat> listen, it's not pleasant, but it's the sweetest thing. It's the sweetest thing. Once you ever hear it, once you ever know it, it's the sweetest thing that will ever happen to you. Because, listen, it is a deliverer from the death of hell mm -hmm. it's a it's a calling and saying that I God have chosen you to be one of mine and so he says this morning if you blaspheme that if you say that's wrong if you say he's wrong listen what does he say he says and he says but unto him that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven right and so uh and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the masters and, and power, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And Amen. listen, so this, this morning, the Holy Ghost never leaves us, leaves us. He's always with us because God sent him here to this earth to be our comforter. And when we would get down and out and we have problems and all these things, listen, he's always there. He's always there to encourage our hearts. And, and he may, through the Holy Spirit, send a brother or a sister also to comfort. And listen, there's nothing more uh, comforting than a brother or sister that you know that's living for the for the Lord to come to you and sympathize with you and encourage you. And so we this morning as people of God needs to be very, very, very uh, 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 aware of what we say and what we do and and uh, and how our minds think. Now I want I want to turn to Matthew 23, 23. I want to read you a little bit here. Matthew 23 and verse 23, he's talking to the Pharisees again, and he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now notice, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. These things that I, I 
look them up a little bit. And these are spices. These are wild, sometime or grow wild. But anyway, they were, they were things that they could buy or they could pick and sell. And he says, you pay tithe of those. But he says, and have omitted uh, the weightier matter of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave the others undone. And so he's, he's, not, he's not saying <clears throat> anything against the tithing right. on what he says. But he says, hey, you went halfway. Mm -hmm. you, went, you went part of the way. You didn't completely do what you were supposed to because he says here that in, in, in a word that, that he desires a tenth of what we have or what we make and we're to worship or to honor him with these things and listen he says over Malachi he said I'll pour you out a blessing which you cannot cannot hold he said I'll open up the windows to you and just pour it out to you and listen Amen. yeah you can see the dollar bills are falling but listen people it's not altogether dollar bills it's it's your health and strength it's your it's your home it's your your church and all of these things he said and we're getting it we're getting the blessing this morning uh, by having a place that we can come in Amen. together together and fellowship together we we're getting that window open this morning and, and the blessing because the blessing that he's pouring out on us this morning is god's word and listen we could be in another place somewhere or another in a building called a church and listen to hearing damnable heresy uh, coming right. from the mouth of the one who says he's called to preach when he's not. And so here he says you have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you have to done and not have even undone. You blind guys which strain at a gnat <laughs> and swallow a camel. Now he's he is putting it on them like that this morning, and and he uh, he talked to him in one time about how they they said something to him about washing their their hands before they eat, and he he explained to them about this situation. It's not what goes in, what comes out that defiles the body. But he said here. Uh, here you strain at a gnat, and I don't know if all of you know what a gnat is, but a gnat is the smallest. It's, it's smaller than a than a. Just, it's a minute, small little bug. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, "Hey, you you have that in your throat, and you gag at it, and you and you try to spit it out, and to get rid of it. But here comes the camel, and he's talking about the the." sins a, 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 a pile up on and he said you slaughter them mm -hmm. and that's that is this morning what their conditions was and he says here woe unto you in verse 24 or 25 <coughs> woe unto you scribes and pharisees and hypocrites for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess right. and this morning again i mentioned to you about not what goes in the, the body that defiles it but what comes out and he's saying you may clean the outside and like the the sepulchers that were uh, uh of the disciples and all are, are the people are they painted them and made them clean on the outside and he said you paint the sepulchers white and and you praise them and all this but he says Inside there is dead men bones right. and, and the carpet of those people. And he says, you are doing things wrong. And again, I mentioned this about the, uh, well, it's right down here in verse 27. I'll read it to you. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye like unto whitest sepulchers. He says, you're like them, which indeed appear be beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity woe unto you scribes and pharisees you hypocrites because ye blind the build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and they using that for a type of their religion and say if and say if we had been 
in the days of our fathers, we would not have partaker, partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, Jesus saying, mm -hmm. that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. And here he's saying to me this morning, and, and I believe this is what he's trying to tell these people here. Listen, your, your fathers and your mothers were Pharisees. And they did this thing, and listen, you're going right with their teaching, mm -hmm. and you'll do the same thing and denying that you would do it. And so he said, Hear wherefore ye be witness unto yourself that ye are the children of them that which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Amen. Ye serpents, ye gen generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? And so he's putting it very plain to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same thing that we as God's people need to remember. And if we have the opportunity, and I don't, I don't mean just cram things down people's throat, but you could tell them, hey, the Bible says this, or the Bible says that. And uh, uh, you, you, can, you can talk to people and, if, and, and let them see these things. And of course, I know that, uh, I know that, uh, uh, once upon a time, I knew uh, people that went out, and uh, they would cram it. They would they would find somebody that was mean as hell and go to his house and try to cram this stuff down their throats. Well, listen, you don't do it that way. Amen. Right? If you're going to do it, say it with a heart of love and and be be sure that God has sent you. Right. Because listen, if you're not, you're 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 wrong as two wrong as two left shoes. So now I want to read just one more thing here too, and, and I'll, 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 I'll close. Okay. <clears throat> in, uh, in Luke 11, 20, 37, Luke 11, 37, I'm going to read you just a little bit here. In verse 37 of Luke 11, and he spake as certain first, and he, and as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him, to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisees saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Now this thing of washing before dinner or washing hands and stuff like this was, a, some, was something that they devised themselves. It was, there's nothing in there about them doing this uh, to stay in the, in the good graces of God, but they just made it up that because, listen, it's like they were standing in the, in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, the towns or in the war of a, the praying with loud prayer or long prayers. Listen, they did this hand washing to show people, hey, I'm serving God. And listen, it's, it was, it was, it was Pharisee religion. It was not what God had wanted them to do because he says here in uh, verse uh, 37, 38. He said, when the Pharisees saw he, it, he marveled at, that he had not eaten washed it before dinner. Verse 39, and the Lord said unto him, now do ye, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward parts is full of raving and wickedness. Ye fools, did not he that make that which is without make that which is within also. Amen. But rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisee, for ye tithe men and rude and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God uh, and the love of God these ought to ye to have done and not to leave the other under. Woe unto you, Pharisee, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes, you Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. And so the, the, the Lord is saying to them, hey, you don't mean nothing. I mean, it, it, you, when they walk on, so, and he said, warn to in verse 46, also, he said, warn to you lawyers, for ye lay 
lay men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burden, the burden with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and the fathers kill them. So here's here's some of the things uh, David uh, David in his writings he. He says here, he said, David said, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. Amen. Now listen, I am afraid of God's judgment because I know that, uh, that his judgment is true, and I know this morning that my flesh is sinful, and I, I tremble at the thoughts of, of the things that I do sometimes because I know that I get out of the will of the Lord, and I try to confess it, and, uh, and I try to uh, serve Him, but the thing of it is, you know, this old flesh is so hard to control. Right. And uh, we, we need to be more uh, careful with what we say and what we do, what we think, and praise the Lord more. And, and you know, that's all we can do. But anyway, these are some of the things that Jesus uh, said to the Pharisees, and uh, they, uh, in one place, heard that the Pharisees saw that the uh, uh, people uh, eat with unclean hands and stuff like this, and they uh, uh, they uh, uh, said things to them about bad about them. And uh, listen, it, it was all a made-up thing. There was no there was no law. There was no nothing that I know of that says that they had to wash their hands before they eat. So anyway, thank you so much for listening. Pray for us, and, and uh, we appreciate your attention. You bet.